Yes. What the flu? What the floop? What the floop? What the floop is up? What the floop is up? <laughs> what the flip is up, Tube Nation? How are we doing? Bob Saget died. Ah, that's right. God, R.I.P. But anyway, um, God, not to bring the vibe down with that. This, well, I guess this is also kind of bringing the vibe down. This is the last video of the Idlewild series. I'm sad, but also this is a nice ending. In this video, I go hiking. But before I give you the rundown of what this video is about, we do have a sponsorship today, ladies. What's up guys, it's me, Future Sarah. I just wanna give a huge shout out to Tommy John for sponsoring today's video. Okay, girlies, let me ask you a hard hitting, kind of personal question. What do you guys look for in the perfect set of underwear and the perfect bra? Is it comfortability? Is it a seamless fit? Is it breathability? Is it support? What is it? Because because for me, it's comfortability. And I have a bunch of regular bras with the underwire, but I just never wear them. They just sit in my closet. They're too tight. I just cannot stand the wire. It bothers me. And whenever I buy bras, I get really frustrated too because all of the comfortable looking ones don't have any support and can like lift these sisters up. Tommy John knows that feeling comfortable and confident in your clothes, it all starts with your underwear. That is the blueprint to success. I picked out some things from Tommy John. I'm not even joking, you guys. This is the most comfy bra I have ever worn in my life. I say that with my full chest. It's so breathable. It's so comfortable. It feels like you're wearing a sports bra. It's so soft. It feels so nice against your skin. The quality is so premium. It's completely invisible underneath your clothes. There's also adjustable straps. This also has a built-in power mesh support. And there's also this on the bottom. It's called the Comfort Strength Band, AKA not a wire. It ensures that it gives you the best lift possible and just also a really nice shape. And also there's just like a smoothing comfort. I feel like a baddie in this. I wear this mostly every single day. So I really love booty shorts. These are just my go-to because they're comfortable. They don't ride up me. The material is so soft. The lace is really pretty. Oh, they match my nails. These also make my butt look fantastic. Really nice, really nice. Check out this magic trick I just learned. Ready, 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 ready? What? Oh my god. All of a sudden I'm in Tommy John's loungewear. So this is the Tommy John loungewear two-piece set that I picked out. I love this color. I love a good salmon. These are the matching pajama shorts. I feel, I just feel so grown up. You know, you really feel like you have it all figured out. This has been my go-to outfit whenever I wanna watch The Bachelor <laughs> with a glass of red wine and a good friend. There's nothing else like it. I love that it's a little bit more loose fitting. It's very stretchy. The material is premium, okay? It doesn't feel like it's gonna rip. It doesn't feel cheap. This is high quality material, people. It feels so good. And also Tommy John's clothes are designed for motion. It's designed for movement, so nothing rides up anywhere, nothing bunches anywhere, nothing twists up in any crevice. I love that I can mix and match. I can wear this bra with these shorts. I also sometimes when I'm feeling crazy on Bachelor Mondays, I sometimes like twist this up into a knot. And also I will say, this pink color with this pair of red booty shorts together, it's like a Valentine's Day dream. They also offer options perfect for winter time and summertime. So you can layer up, layer down, you know, cause everything is super lightweight. You guys seriously need to check out Tommy John. Click the link in my description box and use my code Sarabesca <laughs> for 20% off plus free shipping. Your chest is about to be blessed. Thank you again, Tommy John, for sponsoring this video, and let's get into it. Wow, Sarah, that's really cool and sounds really comfortable. I definitely could use some support right now, physically and emotionally, because of Bob Saget. 
and also because this video is the last video in the series. If you guys haven't watched the first three videos, I posted the link in the description. The ending of the last video was me sitting in the cafe. There was a lady playing guitar and I had a great breakfast. And then after that, y'all remember the lady with the dog, right? The old lady who gave me her business card? Some witchy woman. I was explaining in the last video that she was telling me about this trail that I needed to go on and I had this magnificent tree that I needed to see, right? So. <laughs> so I'm driving over to this location. It's like at this park. That's where the beginning of the trails start, you know? You have to like pay five bucks. So I paid the five bucks. I park my car. Here's a little montage of me. Right, this is right before I'm about to head on the trail. Twisting top up at the pop up tail. Block up with my single. Yeah, yo, bitch, she wanna do. She see the drip, she wanna mingle. Take the drips and make the flips. I stack my chips up like a Okay, cute montage. Very cute, Sarah. Looks like it's gonna be a very fun, relaxing time for you. <laughs> it wasn't that at all. It wasn't that at all. Oh my god. I did not know that this shit was a steady incline. <sighs> I thought it was just like a chill walk through the forest. No, I'm on a hike. Oh my God. And I'm wearing dogs. I'm gonna tie my shoes better. Bugs everywhere, dude. And the sun is going down. I have no choice. There's no turning back now. Oh God. It's all these flies, bro. <laughs> I noticed that it just keeps going steeper and steeper and it's getting a little bit more hard for me to breathe. And I'm like, oh, this trail is a little intense, but it, it probably won't get worse than this. I was five minutes into this trail and I could not feel my lungs. You know those space bags that they used to sell on those infomercials? My lungs felt like they were in a space bag being compressed. And for a moment there, I was like, dude, is this normal? Like, do I have asthma? Do I need to go to the doctor? Or if I'm just extremely out of shape? Or if I just, or if this is just hiking, is this just what it is? And because I was focusing on my breaths, I could not talk, let alone take my camera out and film myself. All I was doing was just looking in front of me and trying to figure out how to keep moving my legs. I looked like a buffoon out there in Doc Martens. I didn't know it was gonna be a ma I thought it was just a light trail. Anyway, um, so after that, about 10 minutes later, I was stopping like every 30 seconds just to like catch my breath, man. I literally was about to give up. Just turn around and go down the mountain before I got too deep in it because I looked up and I saw like a bunch of rocks and the trail was going through the rocks. Like I had to climb and shit. And I was like, yo, I am not wearing the right shoes for this. And my lungs are crying. Uh, I don't know if I can do that. And I seriously just stood there for two minutes looking at that and I had two voices in my head. I had my anxiety voice being like, this is too hard, this is too hard. You can't do that. You're gonna have a heart attack. This isn't for you. This is dangerous. There's gonna be a mountain lion up there. Just fucking turn around, get in that car and just drive home. This is not for you. But then I had this other voice it was slower, it was more like an Oprah, and it was saying, You know what, Sarah? You're having a hard time right now, but this is great exercise for you. And, hey, this is your last day here. Look around you. You're gonna see some beautiful sights if you keep going. And also, how good is it gonna feel once you get to the very top? You're gonna feel so proud of yourself. And then I got this bitch, and she's like, you can't do anything right. You're not even gonna be able to make it to the top. You can't even upload a video on time for ExpressVPN. How do you expect yourself to do? And then this one's like, hey, don't listen to her, 
okay? She's crazy. Listen to me. You can do anything. And you know how you felt yesterday? Remember when you had terrible confidence in yourself and you were doubting everything about yourself? Well, let's make this the moment where that flips upside down and you start to believe in yourself again once you make it to the top. I was having those two voices wrestle in my mind for two minutes and I was just standing there listening to both of them. This one was louder. This one was right in my ear and it was so soft and smooth and I almost wanted to just start making out with her because I'm like, yes. This is the energy that I need, bitch. I completely shunned away from, I call this voice Becky with an I, dotted with a heart, just Becky, ugh, ugh. And this is Oprah. So I followed my Oprah voice and I just kept going. I just kept going. Oh, fuck my life. What? Once I made that decision to keep going, I downloaded this trail app. I guess it has like every trail in the world. I don't fucking know. I think the app is literally just called Trails or like All Trails. But I downloaded it and I found the trail that I was on. And that's when I realized, I'm like, oh, this is not the right, this is not what I wanted to do in the first place. But maybe the universe sent me here on purpose so I can feel better about myself because yesterday was so shitty. The hike was two hours long, okay? Just realized that. And it was really hard. I was climbing through rocks, bitch. I was like hopping over shit. The trail was just leading me through all of these obstacles. I, I felt like I was in a game. It was fun. It was just so hard. I genuinely felt like I was in Life is Strange. Life is Strange 2 with Sean and Daniel and this then. But I literally felt like I was Sean and Daniel. I felt like I had nowhere to go. I felt like I needed to find food for my brother. I felt like I needed to find shelter. You know, just hiking. So yeah, I didn't film a lot of what happened in that hour, but I will include a little montage and then I'll leave in some clips of you guys just hearing me breathing because my I was crying laughing at this footage because I was trying to record the beautiful scenery but you just hear just me trying to breathe in the background and it's kind of sad but like I thought it was funny because I genuinely was like what the fuck am I doing and how am I doing this and why am I doing this but I love that I'm doing this Before I get to the top, I just really want to sit in the forest and embrace those Life is Strange or like Twilight vibes that I was getting. I felt like I was in Twilight, bitch. Like New Moon when Edward leaves her. Like I felt like I was Bella just like trying to find my way back home after being broken up with by Edward. <laughs> Oh 
my god, it's so pretty. I'm so out of shape, it's stupid. <laughs> I really underestimated this hike. No, this trail, sorry. Oh my god. <sighs> this is the first time in so long where I felt still. <sighs> Besides my heart racing because I'm out of shape. But this was so good for my soul. I didn't realize like how suffocated I've really been feeling. And just the fact that I can't hear anything else right now. <sighs> I'm sad to go back, but I came on this little adventure or trip just for inspiration. I've had a lot of pent up emotions, just like building and building and building. That I've just been pushing down for so long because just feeling in general is just very overwhelming, especially when like not only is it shit in my personal life but like things in the world and things about myself that I want to change and kind of realizing some of the shit in my life I'm the common denominator and instead of blaming everybody else for shit sometimes you just gotta look in the mirror and realize like nah you got some work to do too just put your ego aside <sighs> and make some changes so you stop hurting yourself and you stop hurting the people around you. I think I've just been subconsciously self-sabotaging a lot of things, having terrible imposter syndrome. I think that shit has been getting to me hard. And I think that ever since I moved to LA, I think that that's when my imposter syndrome got so bad. Everyone constantly comparing each other to everybody and constantly being reminded of other people's success, other people's progress, other people's just fucking everything. You just see that shit on social media every day, just everyone's life. It's hard not to compare, but this trip really grounded me because I came to this little town and no one gave a fuck about that shit. Everyone was so friendly. Everyone treated everyone so equally. Like there was no hierarchy. There was no pressure. It was just easy. I didn't even know this town at all, but I still felt welcome with warmth. Not like temperature wise, but like energy wise feels really cold in LA, ironically. It just feels vicious. And it feels like no one is really present. I'm being very generic. Obviously, not everyone is like that, you know? But it's just weird. Like, I think that I subconsciously, like, trained myself to also kind of do that when I'm out in public, just like make the interactions short, simple, transactional, and then I'm out, no connection, just boom, 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 boom. That's how it feels in LA, or that's how I feel. I feel like a lot of people don't stop, ground themselves and like have a conversation with people being here like every single time i would go to the store any restaurant any cafe like someone would come up to me and just talk to me like a normal fucking human at first i thought it was weird i was like why the fuck are there so many people talking to me all the time especially like older witchy women i'm like why and and like it was it was sad because when it would start happening, in my head, I'm like, oh my god, can you leave me alone? Like, stop talking to me. I want to be left alone. But it's like, why? Why am I thinking that? Why can't I just 
sit here and meet this new person and have a conversation with them and be curious about their life. And then I kind of sat back and realized that I was thinking those thoughts while I was talking to people here. And I'm like, oh my God, those intrusive anxiety inducing thoughts like socially are so bad for me. And they've been so bad for me. When human beings are social creatures, we want that connection. And I don't know, it's just insane that I was trying to reject that in my head so badly. I don't know why, like something was telling me that that was a threat and that I needed to get out of the situation when logically I know that this person's just being nice and just trying to connect. And so on this trip, I was trying really hard to notice that happening. I'm just gonna keep walking because the sun's going down and I'm scared that I'm gonna be walking in the dark. Um, I feel like Christy Carlson Romano. <laughs> if you know, you know. Christy Carlson Romano has been popping off on her YouTube game. Yeah, I'm on my Christy Carlson Romano shit right now. <laughs> she, all of her YouTube videos are just her out in nature, just spilling tea about being a Disney Channel star. Um, what I wanted to say was something happened at the cafe that I went to today for breakfast that genuinely broke me. I, <laughs> I don't know how to like <laughs> do this right now. Um, it was so sad. So I walk into this cafe. It was the one where I was like, oh my God, there's a huge fucking line. It's Sunday. The waitress gives me those little buzzer things that go off when your table's ready or whatever. And I'm waiting there for like 10 minutes. I look at the little bus boy and the bus boy had to have been 13. He was so little, just this little kid. And he was so precious. He had the biggest smile on his face. He was so happy walking around. He was like dancing to the music. There was a lady who was just playing the guitar in there, just vibing. That's what I'm saying. Every single restaurant that I've gone to so far, they're just playing live music in there. There's just always someone just vibing out and singing. And it's so cool. Oh my God, okay, it's getting steep. Huh. The little boy, okay, wait, I really have to focus right now. I don't want to fall. I don't know why I'm wearing Doc Martens. Oh my God. Um, oh my God. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. Okay. Um, so anyway, that little kid, just his beaming face, him dancing around, like scrubbing those tables. He's just so happy to be alive. And he was trying to talk to the people at the tables and they were just, whoa, this tree's so dope. What? Oh my God, that color. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, People were just giving him, sh whoa. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> These trees are nuts. <gasps> Whoa. Looks like electricity. I was up to like four in the morning watching electricity videos on YouTube. I was just like watching compilations. <laughs> it's really crazy. Anyway. Oh God. The fractals. Jesus so dope dude they're like white against neon burgundy it looks way better in person whole it's like almost metallic damn damn this tree has seen some shit <laughs> this tree has seen some shit Wow, there's some numbers. 65, that one's in a circle. Remember that, 65. <laughs> so I get seated at my table and I'm literally right in front of the guitar lady who was just jamming out. I was like, the, my table was right in front of her face, which is fine, I don't care, I was happy. Whoa, dude, these trees are tripping me out.
Oh, sorry, I'm so distracted. I like cannot talk. My ADHD is really acting up right now. I'm just in awe right now. Damn, Daniel. Um, okay, but all I'm trying to say is <laughs> I ate my food, it was super good. I had an eggs benedict, some gluten-free toast. Also, what I love about this little town is they're so gluten-free friendly and so vegan friendly. There was just so many great restaurants here. <laughs> anyway, so I had my eggs benedict, it was so good. When I was done, I was listening to this lady vibe out. I was like kind of uncomfortably close to her. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but like I was, my table was so close to her. And so I didn't really know what to do. I'm like, do I just stare at her while she's playing and singing? Or will she like feel my burning eye contact? Do I look at my phone? Like, what the fuck? When I was like thinking those thoughts and I'm just like watching her, I get a text from Ashlyn and it was so nice. I was texting her and catching her up on <laughs> the shit that I'm going through. So what I'm going through right now is a little bit too personal where I don't want to share on the internet. Yeah, social media stresses me out because like as much as I want to share my life with you guys and like connect with you guys and want you guys to know what's going on with me, I do need to draw boundaries too. What I want to keep to myself, it's like weird because I know that when I'm vulnerable, you guys like really see me and um, feel me. And that's what I want. But also, I don't know who watches my shit. I've always been good at what I want to share and what I don't. Like I have that intuition in me. Cause there's a, oh my God, I scared the shit out of me. Oh my God, I'm so hard to act. It's just a squirrel. But yeah, there's a lot of shit that you don't know about me. <laughs> I've been going through it. Hey. Whoa. The fuck? Holy shit. This looks like it's out of a cartoon. It looks like a monster. No, it doesn't. This is a great, great, great granddaddy. So much knowledge. Oh, I want to sit on that trunk. Wow. Oh my god. You're beautiful. I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about. I kind of went on a tangent. Oh yeah, I was catching Ashlyn up on my shit. I haven't talked to her in a minute and it was just really nice. Just catch up. I just realized that I never finished the story with the little bus boy boy, the little kid. So let me just finish up that story really quick. Basically, why that little boy broke my heart was because he was going up to all of these tables, right? And, and serving them, taking orders for them. A lot of the people just, you know, told them their order and then got back into their conversation with the people at their table. And then the little boy's like, coming right up. And then he would you know, do his tasks. He came over to my table. I wish I recorded this, but I didn't just because he's like 13. And all I said was like, hi, how are you? And he was like, I'm good. How are you? And I was like, I'm good. How long have you been working here? You seem so young. And he was like, oh my gosh, this is my parents' business. And I just like helping them out. His face was so confused, but really happy. He gets my order, he writes it down and he brings me my food and shit. At the very end, he comes to take my food away from me and I already paid and everything. And I was like, thanks again, kid. And he was like, thank you so much for just talking to me. And I was like, what? He said, no one asks me how I am. And I'm like, why? That's so, what? Anyway, so that broke me. I literally left the restaurant and I almost started crying because I was like, oh my God. What he just expressed to me is exactly how I felt with everybody else, you know, talking to me here. So I'm glad that I could transfer that onto him. So that was really sweet. That was just the end of that story. I never got along to it in my video. My attention span was playing pinball in that forest. Oh my God. 
Wow. It looks like a fucking scarecrow. Oh my god, seeing this at night would be terrifying. This tree has also seen some shit. <laughs> and he's a little bit fucked up by it. Like, he's a little traumatized. No, I'm kidding. It's actually so freaking beautiful. That's so nuts. I can't even imagine how scary that would look in the dark. Thank God the sun is still out. I would shit my pants. <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like a monster. Those look like two legs like upside down, right? Ew, that's freaky as fuck. Do you see what I mean? Like two thighs. <laughs> Upside down? Ew, that's fucking freaky. Hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, oh we're almost back, thank God. Wow, bitch. My camera didn't really pick up his voice, but that kid sounded literally like Daniel. I wanna like scare them. <sighs> That'd be so fucked. Oh, I wish I would have come up here earlier. Fuck. It's so pretty. This one stay up here forever. I cannot believe the sun is going down. It's four. Oh, ow. God damn. I'm proud of myself. I made it. staring at this one tree for like 10 minutes and like talking to it right in front of these houses. Oh, I thought I was on drugs. Dude, these trees are so insane. Me acting like I've never seen a tree in my life from Oregon. After that, it was perfect timing. Like literally right when I got to my car, the sun was down and thank, oh my God, if I were to stay out there any longer, I would have been fucked. Like I actually would have been fucked. I could just tell that it would be so scary at night to go through that just by the trees around me. Um, really terrifying silhouettes in that forest. But yeah, then I get in my car and I travel on home. Why are, why are you on my dick? The speed limit's 35 and I'm going 45 and you're riding me. You're a dick. What do you want me to do? Go faster on this windy ass road and die? Are you joking? You're crazy. You have me fooled. If you think I'm gonna do that, this shit's so windy. How do you not care? Oh my God. Get off my dick. I just had a peaceful day. I just went on an amazing hike. Nothing can bring me down. You will not bring me down. I am pulling over to the side. Fucking go. 
idiot. I hate you. No, I don't. I don't hate. Jesus. Why are you going so fast? What is the rush? I would rather get home in one piece than show off to my friends that I can go fast down this road. Like, it's not cool. It's not hip. You're not unique. And I've taken this drive so many times where I know exactly what is happening around me nature-wise and I'm just trying to enjoy it. It's really beautiful during the day. I just don't appreciate the dick riding when I'm trying to focus on not crashing. So fuck off. Oh, now he's pulling to the side. Oh, that's a different car. Don't you even think about getting behind me. Smoking out the window. I cannot stop listening to Silk Sonic's album, dude. But I don't have service right now, so I can't play music. So if you're trying to lay in these eyes, I'ma leave the door open. I'ma leave the door open. I'm sorry. I always feel so bad because my brights are blasting. And sometimes I don't see a bitch coming around the corner and then whatever. It's life. Oh, sorry. San Benazena. It looks really pretty right now. Jeez. If you feel it, what I'm feeling, I want you like I want you to know, baby. Ugh. If you feel. Ow! It was so bright. If you feel it, what I'm feeling, you want me like I want you to know, baby. Tell me that you're coming through. I still don't have my voice. I lost my voice when I had my mental breakdown yesterday. <clears throat> I literally lost my voice from screaming. So I just cannot wait to go home and make some throat coat tea with honey. <clears throat> if you're feeling what I'm feeling, you want me like I want you tonight, baby. Tell me that you're coming through. You got plans. Oh, don't say that. No, no, no. No, no, no. I look too good to be alone. And I love it to keep me waiting. There's so much love we could be making. Come on. We could be kissing, touching, bubbling, girl, it's bubbling and jumping and jumping. <laughs> I think I just said dumpling. Because I don't know with the dumplings. <laughs> I am playing no games. I've been wanting to see. It's going straight from my heart. Oh, my voice. God. So if you try to lay in these eyes. Okay, I'm going to stop this now. All right, y'all. I didn't film anything after that point. I just went straight to bed. I was exhausted and I was really happy to be home, honestly. No matter how much I shit talk LA, I do all the time, but it's kind of in like a, it's like a brother sister energy, you know? Like I really fucking hate it, but I also really love it here. And I'm not just saying that, although it, I can feel a little bit suffocated at times, there's still just so many different places you can go to escape that. The ocean, Big Bear to snowboard, that's only like two hours away. You can go to Idlewild. And there's also a lot of cool people here too. I just kind of have a little bit of a negative association with LA sometimes because of what I do for my job. And the YouTuber influencer life is just very cringy to me. <laughs> a lot of the time where a lot of the things that I see people in my field doing just it just makes me laugh um but there's also groups of people in my industry that don't make me cringe and I'm also friends with people that don't work in social media and don't do that shit which is so nice that's just what matters most is just finding people 
around you that you feel that you can be yourself around and you can enjoy where you live you know what i'm saying and i do have that i feel like just everybody gets frustrated with where they live from time to time i definitely don't want to stay in la forever i do want to get to a point where i can buy property in different places and just kind of move around because I think that deep down in my soul I'm just meant to be moving around and just being in different places for periods of time that's what I enjoy most and what I was saying when I was sitting and having that you know come to Jesus moment about people not being present here I think that that's just kind of happening everywhere right now I think a lot of people are probably experiencing this when they're out and about or even hanging out with their friends a lot of the times people around them aren't being present either they're on their phones or you can just tell their energy is not here that's not just an LA problem but I think that the problem does get bad over here because of the influencer culture just the industry of needing to be on your phone all the time to like post shit and that's your job you know what I'm saying you just notice it more and that's what I was realizing is I just notice it all the time by living here but it is a problem everywhere I actually think LA is really great I'm literally from here I was born in Orange County all of my extended family live in Orange County I'm like a true California girl at heart if you will so that's why I'm saying like I just have a love-hate relationship with it i feel like everyone who lives here says that i really am enjoying it right now just a lot of creativity here too that's something that i always forget it's really weird it's like kind of like the love hate thing it's like some days you feel like shit about yourself because you're comparing yourself to people you just feel really uninspired creatively but then on the other hand you get bursts of inspiration because you know that you can do those things too and you get ideas from people. There's just so many creative people around me, which is really, really nice. A lot of the creative people around me that I encounter also go through these same struggles as me, especially if they're on my frequency. And that's something that I'm trying to get better at finding. I, I've definitely found like a core handful of people out here that I feel like I really, really vibe with, but it's just about growing that and just finding more people like that because I know that there are so many dope ass people out here so I just can't be so close-minded to it a lot of people are like Sarah you need to move to Idlewild I don't think I would ever move there because first of all there's not a lot of diversity there I noticed it's a lot of white older people as much as I love the older witchy women, I just can't, I just, I need diversity. I need um, just different people that don't look like me. I mean, there are, there is diversity there, little bits of it, but it's mostly, it's predominantly white in Idlewild. I'm lucky enough where I don't have to feel uncomfortable in a town like that i felt welcomed and i felt comfortable which is like a huge privilege for me to even say that but i know for a lot of people like if they went there i don't know if they would feel that way you know what i'm saying i just want to be around more people like you know so i just don't see myself moving there I could see myself in the future getting a cabin there so I can go there sometimes, but I, I would never just move there. Just pack up my shit and move out. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's cute and I will visit there often. The mayor of that town is literally a dog. You can look it up. They don't have a human mayor. They have a dog as their mayor. It's just precious. It's really cute. It's really cute. And I just love everything that they're about. They're just all about music. They're all about art. I had a great time. And I hope that you guys had a great time watching this. If you like this video, make sure you like it. That helps me out a lot. And if you're not subscribed already, what are you doing? Just subscribe. Just do it. It takes one second to scroll down, click the button, just subscribe. Just so you don't have to miss any videos. Click the notification bell if you want to get notified when I post. That helps me out too. That helps you out. And yeah. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoy your January. Love you. My freedom and my fam. Keep it playing, keep it pushing. Keep them guessing, keep them looking. Keep my people out the book. Cause we legendary. I just talking how I 